Hey everyone, my name's Boone, and today I'm working on a little piece about Abraham Lincoln. Naturally, this piece is going to consist of a few still images. Now, when you're working with still images inside of Adobe Premiere Pro, the workflow can be a little bit different than as when you're working with just standard video clips. For example, when you're working with still images, you have to consider the varying resolutions that you might be encountering. Sometimes you need to do touch-up work, and then you have to consider adding movement to make your image more visually dynamic. So today I'm going to show you a few best practices that are going to make working with still images in Adobe Premiere Pro nice and easy. So still images can come in a number of different shapes, sizes, and resolutions. So one of the first things you want to take a close look at is the size of your photograph and compare that with the size of your particular sequence. If you want to scale that photo up at all, you want to make sure that you have a high enough resolution so that everything stays in sharp focus when you scale it up. For example, this photo of Lincoln is 2500 by 3000 pixels. Now here's what it looks like in a 1920 by 1080 standard HD sequence. I've got plenty of room to work with here to animate it, move it around, scale it up. Now here's the same image in an Ultra HD 4K sequence. I'm going to have to scale this up a bit to fill the frame, and the more I scale it up, the more pixelated it's going to become. Now this really shouldn't be that much of an issue for this particular sequence because I'm not scaling it up that much, but you really want to pay attention because if you have some low resolution images in your project, they might cause problems. So if you're just looking for a quick way to automatically fit your image to your frame, I'm going to show you how to do that. So here I have a 1920 by 1080 standard HD sequence open. I'm going to grab this same photograph and drop it in. And here you can see right away it's already um, too big. This is a nice high resolution image, but I want to automatically fit it to fit within the frame. So now this is quite easy to do. I'm going to right click on the image. And I have two different options here actually. I have scale to frame size and I have set to frame size. Now it's important to understand the difference because these do um, very different things. First, scale to frame size. Um, well, to see what this does, I'm gonna open up the effect controls panel. With the layers selected, I'm gonna go to window and select effect control so now I can see all of these properties here. Pay particular attention to the scale attribute. It's set to 100 right now because this photo is at 100. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select scale to frame size. Now what this is doing is essentially resampling the image and that's really important to know because as it resamples, it's removing pixel information so you're actually losing quality in your photo here. And if I decide to rescale this back up, I'm going over 100. You can see now I'm at 177 and it's going up. So that way you know that you're going well above 100% of your new resampled image, which means you're gonna lose quality. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo this, undo that scale to frame size. Now, if I right click and I go to set to frame size, if you look over at the scale attribute, it is now set to 36, which means it didn't resample it. You didn't lose any of that pixel information. So now when I go to scale it up, I can scale it back up to 100. All that information is still there. Now, if you have a preference here, you can actually um, set a default. So if you go to edit preferences, media, you can see right here, it says default media scaling, and I have those two options right here. So once you set that default preference, the next time you reopen Premiere Pro and you drop a photo into your timeline, it's gonna follow that default. All right, so I've got my image here, and now I wanna add some life to it, and I can do that by animating and adding some keyframes. But before I do that, what I wanna do is I wanna position my anchor point. Now, the anchor point is the, essentially the center of your layer and that any animations you make or any attributes that you adjust, it's gonna center around that anchor point. So what I wanna do for this particular photograph is move the anchor point to his face, somewhere probably between his eyes because right now it will default to have that anchor point right in the middle of the photograph. So if I go over to my effect controls panel and I click on the anchor point, I can see right here that I have the anchor point crosshairs and right here I can manually adjust the X and Y position. So if I move the Y position, I'll be able to move it and place it um, kind of right between his eyes here. Now this thing is ready to animate. So now I could just leave it like this and just edit my photos together, but that would be incredibly boring. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add some movement to this by just doing some basic keyframes. So I'm gonna open this area back up in my effect controls panel. And let's say we wanna start um, maybe down near his hands and then have the camera kind of move up position wise and maybe do a little scale Animation to his face. So this is also known as the it's called the Ken Burns effect 
for the famous documentary filmmaker Ken Burns who does all the PBS historical documentaries. What I want to do is go to the beginning point here and I'm going to hit this little toggle animation button. It's a stopwatch symbol. So I'm going to turn position on and then I'm going to move it to its start point. So I'm going to grab the Y attribute and let's say we want to start down here at his hands. Then I'll go over to maybe the four second mark here and then we'll go end up on his face. And now I'm going to add a keyframe for scale here and let's have it scale up just a little bit maybe 110 and now since we move that anchor point it's scaling nicely right right around that anchor point so if I take a look at this it's looking okay but it's quite uh, it's not very smooth so one way I can smooth it out is to grab these keyframes and I can select um, both of them at the same time and just choose ease out to add some easing then I grab these two and under temporal interpolation ease in so now that'll smooth the in and out let's take a look you can see there it's much there we go I'm gonna actually zoom out here and make this a little bit longer maybe 10 seconds speaking of duration you can actually change the default duration that still images are in Adobe Premiere Pro so for that just go over to edit preferences and then select timeline now right over here third from the top it says still image default duration I can specify whether I want to see that in seconds or frames right now it's set to five but let's say I'm working with a bunch of photographs and I want them all to be around the same length this is gonna help me uh, speed up that workflow a lot so since Premiere Pro is in the Adobe family, it plays very well with Photoshop, and this is very, very powerful. So here I have the same photograph of Lincoln, and you can see this one has some, uh, some scratches here. So let's say I wanna get rid of this. Actually, let me just set this to frame size, and you can see they're on his jacket here, some on his arm. So what I, what I can do is I can actually right click here, and it says edit in Adobe Photoshop. So I'm gonna click on that. That will automatically launch Photoshop. Now, if you're working with a lot of historical images, um, this can be a huge part of your workflow. So it's important to know how to do this. Now, once we get into Photoshop, I'm going to show you just one particular thing that you can do that can take you a long way. So you don't have to, don't be intimidated by Photoshop thinking that there's so many tools that you have to use, you know, a bunch to, to make your photos look nice. You can do a lot with just one tool. Okay, so here I am in Adobe Photoshop and the tool that I like to use is the patch tool. If you go over here, it's uh, right under here, shortcut key J. With this selected, I'm just going to zoom into the spots here. This is a pretty big one. So all you need to do is click and drag around just real fast. Once that's selected, click within there and just drag, release, and then deselect. Um, I'm doing control or command D. And just like that, you can you can kind of patch these areas up real fast and it works out real well. So deselect. Deselect. And you can see how quickly I can patch up these little blemishes. And this can this can work on a lot of different things. You can remove wrinkles. Um, and just like that, with one tool, I fixed that, cleaned it up real quick. And now the cool thing about this is all I need to do is save it. And now watch what, watch what happens when I go back to Adobe Premiere Pro. Those automatically are removed, that updates. So if I ever open this up um, in Photoshop again and make any changes, that is going to reflect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So I have the movement here. It's looking pretty good, but it's still pretty plain and bland. There's more I can do to it. One thing I like to do is add overlays. For this particular piece, I think some film grain would look pretty nice because this is an historical image. So I happen to have this free pack from Shutterstock here, and we're gonna leave a link in the video description. These are five uh, free film grain overlays. They have eight millimeter, 16 millimeter, 35 millimeter, and I've got them here in the project. So I think this eight millimeter would be really good. And these are actually ultra HD. So I'm gonna drop this over my clip here, quickly uh, duplicate it. Actually, let me just resize it first because it's quite large right now. This again is a 1920 by 1080 sequence. So again, I'm gonna use that set to frame size. 
and then I'm going to go to the effect controls panel under opacity there's a blend mode option I'm just gonna set this to overlay and now that film grain should be applied I can hold alt do a duplicate here to run the course of the sequence and then just trim trim the fat there let's take a look at this with the film grain applied oh yeah that's like 500 percent better now while the film grain looks incredibly good it's done wonders to this particular image there's still more i can do so if i go to window i'm going to open up the lumetri color panel and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna work on an adjustment layer. Now I could just throw it on my photograph here, but there's a few reasons I don't wanna do that. For one, I'm gonna be adding a vignette. And if I added just the Lumetri effect here, it's gonna add a vignette to the photograph and not to my frame. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on this button here and I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer. And the frame size is perfectly fine. I'm gonna drag that on top here. Another reason to use this is because you can put the uh, adjustment layer over multiple photographs as, a, as opposed or as compared to applying that Lumetri effect to multiple photographs. So I'm going to make sure I have the adjustment layer selected and now I'm going to go and first thing I want to do is just add that vignette. So I'm going to crank this down here and move the midpoint in and then uh, you know really feather it out. Maybe adjust around this a little bit. And there's a ton of different um, looks you can get here. I don't want to go too crazy. I mean, I could give it like a little faded film look. That's just going to, um, you know, wash it out a little bit. Bring the, the black level up. And maybe something like that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you in the next one.